century. Fifth century. And well, not in the manner described, but I was I was hung on a stake. Yes. Okay. So, in my opinion, somebody who was crucified would be somebody who was in victim mode. And I don't really think that the Jesus Christ that I know, uh, or any being who would be of that vibration, divine love vibration, would be in victim mode and therefore crucified. So, could you please explain that? How did I get crucified with my law of attraction? Is really the question you're asking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I chose <laughs> to be um, crucified um, and I know this is going to sound probably a li little weird <laughs> um, <laughs> not like a <laughs> fair enough Touche. <laughs> um, yeah. What happened was that uh, after three and a half years of ministry, I started realising that very few people were actually doing their emotional work. Very few people had a deep longing for God and a deep longing for God's love. And the reason why was because they didn't trust that it was true. They didn't trust that they had... A, they didn't believe they had anything other than this life, the life that they had in the physical state. Even my own soulmate did not believe uh, in, at the soul level. She, it, it, it appealed to her, and just like it appeals to you, right? It appeals to all the people when you start talking about having an eternal existence, and this, this is only a part of it. It appeals to everyone, because it means that we don't have to afraid, be afraid of death and for lots of other reasons, emotionally as well. But it never hit their heart. And so what happened was that very few people, after three and a half years of talking and, and explaining the truths about divine love and how it enters the soul and all those kind of things, very few people were, were listening. And there was also a lot of opposition. And when I say a lot of opposition, uh, what, what would happen is because of the religious format at the time was one of priesthood laity, what happened is the priesthood started feeling that they were going to lose their control over the masses if the masses continued to listen to the message that I was speaking as much as I was speaking. And so what happened was that uh, they then started uh, sending assassins to try to kill me uh, and I had a few attempts on my life before I died. And, and then what happened was that... Um, um, because I realised that really in the end the only way people were going to believe that there was life after death, if I could term it, use that terminology, um, was for me to actually demonstrate that there was life after death. You follow me? Yeah. And so, and so what I did was, um, up until that time, up until I had that realisation, I kept avoiding and avoiding and avoiding this circumstance and avoiding that circumstance and avoiding this circumstance. I'd, so basically I'd run away from uh, potential harm because I had many spirits communicating with me telling me that oh, tomorrow this is going to happen if you stay here. And so what I would do straight away is that night I'd get up and leave and go somewhere else. And I did that a lot of times throughout the three and a half years that I went in the public preaching work. So what, what would happen was that uh, I'd get these uh, indications that there were going to be problems the next day or something, and in the majority of instances what I would do is I'd leave that town and go to another town and begin preaching there or begin teaching there. And of course oh, by... that must have bummed them out. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of times what happened is that the, there were a group of people with me following me as well. Uh, when I say follow me, they were just my mates, just like you have mates and friends and we all just got up and left, right? And we'd go to another place. And there were more women than men, in fact, uh, were doing that. So there were more women, follow, more women who would follow with us than men. And, and we'd go to another location and then we'd stay in that location and then the minister, you know, priesthood would find us and then, and then the same kind of event would occur again where I'd leave that location to get away from the potential danger and go to another location. So it got that way after three and a half years of going from one location to another location to another location and the attempts on my life intensifying and, and in the end everybody becoming more and more afraid about that. And so, and so what, I, what I felt was that at some point I was going to die. 
uh, because at some point there were going to be too many attempts for me to get away from. And I also felt that at some point I would have to die to demonstrate the truth that there was in fact everlasting life. There was in fact life after a person died. We have a spirit body. I wanted to demonstrate that. So about uh, two weeks before the crucifixion, my soulmate had some, mem some, some visions about my coming death, which she didn't tell me about. And, um, and then the night, of, uh, the night that I was captured by the Roman soldiers, um, John the Baptist, who was dead, uh, appeared to me and told me that if I remained where I was that night, that I would be captured within a few hours and, uh, and it would lead to my death. So um, I had to make a decision, really. And the re uh, have any of you read the Bible? In John 17, John chapter 17, is a record of my prayer to my father about that coming, that coming uh, event. So, um, so what I had to do then was just make the decision, was I going to decide to leave that situation again, or was I going to just follow through now and just let the events occur? And so what I decided at that point was that I would let the events occur. And that's one of the reasons why my soulmate's quite angry with me now, because she feels that I shouldn't have let those events occur. It had a terrible impact on her life after that. So, um, so the events of that night and the following day were all the result, really, of my choice to, to no longer get away from that situation. And the reason why that situation occurred regularly was because of... Um, I describe it in the pageant messages as a war between truth and error. <coughs> when you are in a condition of truth, you do not compromise the condition. Do you follow? <coughs> when, you, when you get into a condition of truth where you love truth more than life, you will never ever compromise the truth for anything, ever. Right? Once you get into that condition, that will automatically attract every single person around you who's in error. Because every person in error needs truth in order to grow. Do you follow me? So the law of attraction is all this truth is going to attract a lot of error as well. Right? And, and the error is attracted in order for the error to be exposed and worked on emotionally, if the person has that choice, if they're going to make that choice. But actually what happened... The majority of times what ha actually happened was that error usually wants to fight for error. And that's what happened in, in my case. So error fought for error and uh, I wouldn't budge. I had the opportunity to get out of it many times over the next day uh, where I could have said, no, I'm not the Messiah or I could have said, no, I'm not the King of the Jews. And I could have said, there's a lot of things that I could have said that may have delayed the event, which I chose not to say. Does that make sense? And that's why it all happened. To demonstrate life after death. To demonstrate the people they had nothing to fear. Mm. Did you actually say, the Father will have you forsaken me? No. No, the question that was asked then was, did I actually say, my Father, why have you forsaken me? And I never said that. So you did actually... You did die for our sins of no. error, is that? No. No. But you, you died to show us that um, we... I, I, I lived a life of truth to show you the results of truth. That we can too. That you can do as well. But I didn't die for your sins. No, in fact, nobody can die for your sins. Even you can't. <laughs> do, do you understand that? You will not die for your sins. You will pay for your sins. 